Hello, and welcome back to A Course in Miracles to this fun and long-standing video series. I'm Tomas. Okay, well, this is a beautiful, beautiful idea that we're going to talk about today. And yes, you can say that about all of them. We're specifically going to focus on lesson 296 in the workbook today. The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. Mm -hmm. Who else? What else? Right? The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. This is a beautiful idea. Now, is, as you might imagine, this is what's happening every time I turn on the camera and the microphone, which is just right over here, and start talking about A Course in Miracles, about spirituality. Yeah? This is what's happening. This is what is happening anytime a teacher or a pastor or a priest, anyone, right, a shaman, anyone in the realm, the entire realm of spirituality, all encompassing, right? This is what's happening anytime someone teaches is if they're really in it, it's not them that's teaching. It's not the human being, right? It's not the human form that appears to be talking. It's their teacher, right? So what I'm doing and what the Holy Spirit invites you to do as well is to allow him, her, it, right? The universal inspiration, the voice for God, substitute for that if you choose your guide, your teacher, your guides, if there's a team of guides, your guides. Allow them to speak through you. Oh yeah, this is the flow. This is way away from the Tao, doing, not doing. I appear to be doing, yet I'm not doing. It's not me that's doing the acting. It's not me that's choosing and selecting the words to say to all of you. And I'm also saying them to myself. <laughs> Not just because I'm talking to a screen and there's no one else in the room, <laughs> because it's pre recorded. Not just for that reason. So let us all allow the Holy Spirit to speak through us today. The prayer, the italicized prayer that accompanies today's idea is particularly beautiful. It's poignant and it's, as all of them are, directly relevant. The world needs to hear the voice for God today and every day. There's never any exception to that so long as people struggle in hell, in hell. Samsara, suffering, hell, same thing. Yeah. As long as we're caught up in this, we need to hear the voice for God. We need to be reminded of who we are. Now, these words that we need to hear could take any number of different forms. I'm but one of many teachers. And let's all be really happy that's the case, right? Because there are some of you out there that only I will reach. That's just the way it's laid out. And for some of you, there may be someone else that 
can reach you with his or her words in a way that no one else is going to in this lifetime. And this is why I always say that it, it's so imperative that we show up and teach. That is critically important that we don't leave our brothers and sisters in hell because when you withdraw your teaching, when you withdraw your forgiveness, when you refuse to extend love and instead perpetuate hate, discord, fear, what's really going on? Well, what's going on is you're leaving your brothers and sisters in hell. There are people out there that need to hear your message. Now, this does not mean that you have to have a live stream dedicated to A Course in Miracles. Doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean that you have to be a preacher or certified as, as a shaman or a priest or a priestess or a lama or anything like that. That's not what that means. Because we're always teaching all of the time. The commentary for Lesson 296 brings our minds back to that fact, doesn't it? That we are always teaching all of the time. We're teaching, we're learning. So the question then for each of us in the present moment becomes, what are we teaching? So what are you teaching? Are you allowing the voice for God to speak through you? Or are you allowing the little voice of the ego, the limited voice, to continue to foment separation? So what we're doing in this process of allowing the Holy Spirit to seek through us is we're uh, speak through us, is we're allowing the we're allowing the voice for God to help everyone else, that to extend God's love to everyone in the world. That's what we're doing. We're allowing the voice for God to persuade the world to drop its defenses and choose love. We're allowing this voice to remind us of who we are and to remind us of what the description calls the short and easy path to God. Let's talk about that for a moment. Short and easy. Well, it doesn't necessarily seem easy, does it, when you're in the throes of leaving your ego to the side. It never goes quietly, and it never will. <laughs> in case you were wondering. Right. The ego clinging that we're all in the process of laying to the side is so deep and so pervasive that just when you think you've made significant progress, you realize, <laughs> right, with humility, just how much more progress remains to be made. However, having made some progress, you make more, right? You lay more of it to the side. You forgive even deeper on a deeper level. And things definitely, most definitely do accelerate. This is why we can say the easy path to God, right? The easy path to God is through forgiveness. It's available right now. It would be a legitimate question if you were reading this material to ask, okay, what does he mean what does Jesus mean by the easy path to God? It's forgiveness in the present moment. It's the material that's being presented here in A Course in Miracles. It is presented in different words with different rituals and different symbols in different spiritual and religious traditions. So it claims no monopoly on the truth. It simply states the truth as it is, right? We're to allow the truth to be as it is. We're to allow the voice for God, your guide, your teacher, to speak through you, yeah? 
or to allow this voice to speak through us, whatever form that may end up taking, there are people that only you can reach. Remember that, please remember that. There are people that only you can reach and you don't have to hold yourself out as a spiritual teacher as I do. You don't have to do that. You can absolutely continue in your current line of work, in your current walk of life. If you want to make a change in that, great, do it. But don't do it because you feel like you have to fit a certain mold. See, there are people that only you will relate to. You, and uniquely you, are qualified and situated and positioned to reach these people. As soon as you answer the call, the Course tells us, they'll begin looking for you. Maybe they have already, and maybe you know some of them already, because you've already reached them, or they've reached out to you. It's a powerful thing. So, an easy path to God. What we're talking about, that. And it does this, an easy path to God is available right now. When I think about that, that's what comes to mind for me. And I would be very curious to know what pops into mind for you when you think about what the workbook itself says is an easy path to God. You don't have to die in the physical body to achieve it. You don't have to wait decades. You don't have to wait decades to experience the peace of God. There are many people who believe that you do, but you don't. It's available right now. It doesn't matter if you believe that or not. You're listening to this, so I'm going to say it. Remember, it's not me saying it. Feel free to doubt and question Tomas Garza all you want. He doesn't mind. <laughs> you don't have to die in the physical body to experience the peace of God. It has never gone anywhere. Therefore, it's available right now. It's very powerful. You don't have to put up with all the shit for another 40 to 50 years, maybe more, maybe less, depending on your age, your health, all that, all that stuff, right? That appears to govern the world of illusion. You don't have to wait. The peace of God's available right now. When else? There is only right now. And because this, your identity, has never gone anywhere, despite all of our wanderings and suffering, despite all of our denial, <laughs> conscious, subconscious, unconscious, right? All of it, despite all the crap, who we are has never gone anywhere. Because there is only the eternal present. It's available right now. We allow it. This is a practice of allowing, and it's also very active. How is it active if there's nothing to do? Well, change your mind. That's active. Practice these ideas. Practice your chosen spiritual path. And if you're searching for that, keep searching so that your path will find you. I didn't find A Course in Miracles, really. It found me. So if you're looking, keep looking. It's a great place to be, actually. And how wonderful, isn't it, that we have the entire panoply of world spiritual traditions available right now, at the click of a mouse, we can find out about any spiritual tradition that exists in this world. It's amazing. So there's no reason not to do it. 
Now, if you're practicing a path that you connect with and that helps you keep doing it, right? There are plenty of people who use the material that we're talking about here in A Course in Miracles to augment their current path, to shed light and a new perspective, perhaps a new understanding on their current path. This is beautiful material for just that. It's universal. It's a self-study curriculum. So if you choose to use another word for Holy Spirit, like your guide, your guides, your teacher, allow your teacher to speak through you today. It's a tremendous practice in getting out of your own way, as we say, in spirituality, in allowing the voice for God, your teacher, to run the show, to select the words that you appear to be mouthing and vocalizing to people or typing. Yeah. It's not me that's talking to you. It's the voice for God. What you see before you on the screen is literally just a conduit. It is a mouthpiece dedicated to serving the purpose of healing the Son of God. You heal yourself, of course. What you see talking to you is a mouthpiece. It is a spokesperson only. Only. So what, what you see talking to you won't be here forever because well, it's never been here. Really? When its purpose is served, it's set aside. Just like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing scary about that. I just want to remind you of the 20 workbook lessons that include the statement, I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. So if you ever doubt that, come back to those lessons. Lessons 201 through 220 in the workbook for students to be exact. They have other ideas that they incorporate in there, but that's the big one. Right? That's the one that that Jesus intends to resonate with us. So allow your teacher to speak through you today and you will reach the people you're supposed to reach. They are, I promise you, they are looking for you and you cannot leave them in hell. Doesn't mean you have to take up robes, run off and be a monk or a nun. Stay where you are, right? Start where you are. Hmm? Do what you're comfortable doing, but give all of the activity over to your teacher for your teacher's purposes. That's the key. That's when you know that you're in the flow, when you're not resisting, it's non-resistance allow your teacher to speak through you. When you're typing at a keyboard, you allow your teacher to guide your thought process and your fingers on the keyboard. I never know exactly what I'm going to say when I turn this camera and recorder on, which is fun and exciting. Because in the world, we Really, I mean, each and every one of us has moments, don't we, where we want to have everything all planned out. We want to orchestrate things just so, and then we throw a fit when they don't turn out the way that we've carefully planned them. A fit, sometimes a fit of rage, sometimes a tantrum where we as grown-ups, <laughs> supposed grown-ups, act like little children who don't get a piece of candy who don't get to eat their chocolate cake before dinner, yeah, who don't get their way. I mean, really, 
That's what we as adults act like sometimes. It's not flattering. It's certainly not a pretty picture, but the cool thing about it is we don't have to. Isn't that wonderful? You can change your mind in the present moment. If you've chosen ego clinging, fear-based attack behavior, if you chose it five minutes ago, you don't have to choose it again right now. You can flip the script. See? You're in control of that. When you allow your teacher to speak through you, you're in that flow. Your teacher knows what to do in every circumstance, knows what to say and to whom and in what measure and exactly how many words, exactly the correct body language to get through to the people that you're supposed to reach. So allow him or her or it or them, right? Allow your teacher to do its work. It's the essence of the path right here. Every workbook idea contains it. Lesson 296 is no exception. So. Yeah, I invite you to practice this allowing and to allow, kindly allow your teacher to speak through you. All right. So thank you, as always, for tuning in. And we'll see you again as we continue through this amazing workbook. All right. Have a great day.